Bruchem Aboyim. The topic for tonight's discussion is uh, marriage. Um, not what it used to be, but it's still an important part in people's lives. And it's interesting, I remember one time someone coming to give a lecture about marriage and uh, he was single. <laughs> and um, just hard to listen to someone that hasn't been there and done it. So I've been married 45 years. And, uh, well, at least my wife has. And um, it's a learning experience. And, and especially with my marriage in that when my wife and I got married, we were secular people. And through the journey that we've had, we became Orthodox Jews. And it's interesting to see the difference between marriage as a secular person and then marriage as a religious person following God's dictates. And um, really there's a world of difference. Um, as we know, and we'll get into that about A's and B's that opposites attract. And I'm a strong person. And one of the problems of being a strong individual is sometimes you can be so strong that no one tells you anything. That you really never hear honesty. Because when someone says something, you come on very strong. And they just start to become recessive. And they figure, why bother? He's just going to argue with me anyways. So you never hear advice. All you do is follow your own subjective reasoning. And you make a lot of mistakes doing that. Um, it just doesn't work. But what God did is he orchestrated a system whereby opposites attract. Now, let's really examine the history uh, of marriage. And we know that uh, going all the way back to creation with first man, Adam, that actually Adam was created, the, the verse says, Zachar uh, Nekeva, he bore Mosam, that God really created first man, both male and female. That one side was ma uh, masculine, the other side was feminine. And the reason for that was God actually wanted to wait for the first man to ask for a mate. Um, every, every other creature in creation was born with a mate. Man was not. And man first experienced loneliness. The truth of the matter is that part of marriage is having someone there to share with. You know, there's a saying I'd friend of mine, his mother, I always quote it, the joy with a friend is doubled and pain is cut in half. And there's really no greater friend that you have other than a spouse. Because everyone else in your fam family is a card game. You know, you get dealt these cards, that's your family. You like them, great. You don't like them, too bad. They are still your family. But a uh, a spouse you really are in a different position with. You choose them, they choose you, and you can actually call an end to it. It's not in granite, it's not forever if you don't want it to be. So it still is always a choice. And what it really is is a reunification, bringing together that first creation of man that was Zohar and Nekeva, male and female. So when someone is alone, there's an emptiness because it's unnatural. Man was created to be this whole. And when the husband and wife come together, that's when it comes together. And we'll talk a little bit about how God works on this. But we see that as the story unfolds, that first man sees all the other creatures have a mate. And he asks God to give him a mate. And, and an interesting thing, so there are different opinions according to Kabbalah <clears throat> as to what part of man woman was created from. In fact, woman's origin is much higher than man. A woman is a much higher being in many respects, both, on a, both especially spiritually. Um, man was created from the dust of the earth. A woman was created from the body of man. Man from the lowest of beings. 
And yet woman was created from the highest of all beings, man. So there are different opinions as to what limb God took to create woman. And there are those who say, which I like the most, is that God took the rib of man. And the question would be, why a rib? And it's interesting that, number one, is the rib is made out of cartilage versus bone. Cartilage is more flexible. And the ribs protect the most vulnerable and most important uh, organs in the body. And that's what a woman does. She is the protector of the family. She's also flexible. And all of these things allude to the rib that was taken. What else is though very interesting and something we should learn a great lesson from, when God makes woman, uh, he could have allowed Adam to watch the process. Instead, he puts him to sleep. And when he finishes creating, putting this woman together, then he wakes man up, and that's when man first sees woman, a complete, beautiful entity. He does not allow Adam to watch the procedure, all the parts that go in, like a sculptor who is building, who is, who is making something. And it's interesting that it's a great lesson that we are really the product of all of our experiences, good, bad, if you take one thing out from a person's experiences in life, you change the whole person. If you meet someone and you are enamored with them, it's the, really the call, the, the total, total, the sum total of all of their experiences that you found, find in them to be attractive. And many times what we do is we go through true, 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 true admissions to, to a spouse of all the things we've done in our lives. Totally a waste of time. Because many times what we confess about is not important and the other person can't handle it. They think they can. But when they hear that this has happened or that has happened, you've had a relationship with this person or that person, the end result becomes sometimes you destroy what you have when you see the pieces that made up that person that you love so dearly and it starts to play on your mind. Marriage is not a true confessional. You do not have to confess everything that you've done in your life to a spouse. It's really a new beginning for both of you and one that you should build on. And whatever happened in the past has been a gift to make what you have now in the present. And it's interesting that when Adam marries Chava, the way the Torah defines the union is yoda es Chava Ishto, when they had marital relations. So the word yoda, knowing, is a euphemism for marital relations. But it really means something much more. It means to yoda means to know which is really much more difficult and takes more effort than just having a physical relationship with someone. You really don't have to know them to have a physical relationship. It's, it's much like a, a gift. The gift can be very greatly, very prettily wrapped. But the true gift is what's inside, not the wrapping. And when you meet someone... The truth is what we are generally attracted to is the gift wrapping. What makes a person beautiful, what makes a person special, is what's inside of a person. And the only way you can get to that is by getting to know a person. I often tell a story. I had a uh, rabbi when I was a young man, a child. And uh, he was the homeliest person you would ever meet. Um, he gave ugly a good, good, good rap. I mean, he was very, very homely. But yet, when I, mean, I remember looking at him years later, because I was around him, and I looked at him one day and thought how handsome he looked. That his exterior, interior just overwhelmed his exterior. And it made everything about him handsome. And that's the idea of a good marriage. A good marriage consists of yada, getting to know each other your likes and your dislikes, what makes you hot and cold. 
Uh, things that are taboo. We all have those type of things, just don't go there. <laughs> and I think most of all, how to make the other person laugh. Because laughter and sharing that joy with someone, if you can't laugh, then you really can't have a relationship. If it's always serious, if there's no lightness to it, then it becomes very heavy. And, and why walk through life that way? Because basically, I mean, it's God's world. You don't have to carry everything. So it's a partnership. And interestingly enough, in a partnership, not everybody's good at everything. A good partnership consists of each person figuring out what their strengths and their weaknesses are and relying on those other person's strengths where you're weak and they're relying on yours where you're stronger than they are. And walking together. Two people can carry much more than each individual can carry by themselves. And just that support, just knowing that someone cares, really cares, it doesn't have to. And that becomes the idea. Now, it's also important, when get, talking about a gift, when someone gives you a gift, what they really give you is what they think is important. So if you want to know what someone considers important, see what they give you. But that's not really a gift. They've given you what they think is important. A true gift is viyada, to know. When someone taking the time, the effort, and the care to give you what you want, what you care about, what's important to you. And that's the idea and the concept of Vyada, of Adam knowing Chava, his wife. Now, what's really interesting is that uh, a wife is called in Hebrew an Ezer Konegdo, a helpmate who is opposite you, which is Sounds a bit strange. Helpmate opposite you. And the truth of the matter is that A's marry B's. And th that's, that's okay. But the problem is, see, the A, it's like fish in a tank. The A tries to make the B into an A. And the B tries to make the A into a B. It's like fish chasing each other. So if you want an A, marry an A. Or if you want a B, marry a B. So why is it that God gives us this idea that opposites attract and we marry someone who is different than we are and then try to change them. This is the battle of the sexes. That's what marriage, two people competing to see who can make who like them. Because I always used to think that God has nothing else to do in heaven, so what he does is he watches this comedy of two married, this married couple trying to change each other. And the answer is no. All of life is really about one thing, changing growing. The last word in creation is the word lasos, to do. We call this world the world of action. It is our job, God gave us a world and then made us a partner in this world and said change it, make it better. And we are all what's called an olam cut in a small world. So by two opposites coming together, the end result becomes they're not an A, nor are they a B. What they are is something much greater, that C, which is the best of both of them. And this becomes the essence. Not only that, it helps them to be what they need to be, coming closer to their creator and also for children, to show their children and give the children the best of who they are. We've only just touched on the tip of the iceberg. And God willing, next week, what we will do is continue with that, this idea of what we call a beshert, this, this person who has been designated for you. Someone that God has chosen, even though, as, again, as I said, as crazy as it sounds, that this Beshert, as we call it, is someone custom-made only for you. And how God orchestrates this so that people come together. God bless and be well and have a great Shabbos. Thank you for coming.